Hello and welcome to Red Read. Today I want to share some quick thoughts on Christopher Isherwood's Goodbye to Berlin. This is the second Isherwood book that I have read. I did read his later novel A Single Man first and uh, although I overall preferred that that work as a literary piece and I was definitely very moved by it, uh, I was keen to go and read uh, a Goodbye to Berlin and I am glad that I did because I knew that this was set in the 30s and it was sort of talking about the underground culture uh, or like I guess you know the the glamour and sleaze uh, as as says the blurb of Berlin and showing the rise of uh, like the Nazi party but I for whatever reason was under the assumption that this was actually published after the war but no this collection came out in 1939 and most of the stories uh, the stories pretty much range from autumn of 1930 to winter of 1932. So this collection was still published and came out during the war before a lot of, uh, you know, before a lot of the events, like the really, really tragic events transpired. Uh, but, and it was quite crazy actually to read and to see, uh, you know, people already talking about putting Jews in concentration camps and so on uh, in like 1931. The overall structure of this book, I couldn't really decide straight away if I felt that it flowed correctly because I feel like it does change moods ever so slightly. Uh, but what I uh, but what I like and basically the way that the uh, story is structured is that it pretty much goes from more lighthearted to to more dark. And we start with a Berlin diary that is in autumn of 1930. Then we have four chapters that focus on particular people and particular friends that Isherwood had while he was in Berlin. So we start with Sally Bowles. Uh, on Rügen Island is the story of Peter and Otto, who are like a gay couple uh, or assumed gay couple. I'll, I'll kind of get to that. Um, we then go to to the Novaks, which is Otto when he's moved back. He, he Isherwood goes and lives with Otto's family. And then we've got the Landauers, who are a Jewish family. And uh, then finally, at the very end, we've got uh, a Berlin diary in winter of 1932. Uh, going into 1933, and that's not strictly chronological. So, if I recall correctly, uh, the Landauer's section does coincide with the Sarah Bowles section because uh, you know she uh, Isherwood introduces uh, Sally to uh, Natalia Natalia Landauer. But uh, I think that it was a wise choice for Isherwood to kind of swap it around because he stuck because he has that sort of narrative arc that I talked about of it being sort of a bit better and, and just focusing on the bohemian writer actor uh, lifestyle and then going in and seeing the effects and how the Nazis really uh, affected Berlin. In terms of Isherwood's writing style, so I just got out of reading a whole bunch of Gaddis, and so it was kind of surreal to read a book that uh, made sense uh, straight away. And But what I liked is that uh, because this is very autobiographical and presumably characters, like I know that characters are based off certain people, even if maybe names have been changed. What I like about Isherwood is that he does show a sort of restraint in not writing in a necessarily uh, impressionistic style, but he's also not following a Freudian model of wanting to just psychoanalyze all of the characters because the characters are real people. And, uh, you know, even psychoanalysts, uh, there's a character, uh, Peter, who has a bit of a turbulent relationship with psychoanalysts. And what I think Isherwood wisely does is instead of saying, this is what this person said and this is what they meant by it, he just says, this is what this person said, this is what I said in response, maybe he'll say, this is what I felt about it, uh, and that was a, a feeling that I had. So after an interaction that you're more than welcome to uh, perceive and read however you like, Isherwood says, I got the feeling that this person uh, has finally done something that I respect, and so on and so forth, or uh, I left feeling incredibly angry and ashamed. So... Uh, and yeah, I think that that was a wise decision because, you know, th like I said, these aren't characters that he's made up. These are real people and he doesn't necessarily want to assume that, uh, you know, he fully understands them. So uh, in a way of respect, especially because some of the characters at the time of the book coming out would, would not have been living anymore. Uh, he probably just wanted to accurately show what they were like and let us let us make up our own minds as to as to what they meant. 
there are times that are, that are quite funny. Of course, the relationships that Isherwood has, especially with Sally Bowles, are really, uh, th there's some really funny moments. But, uh, of course, as everything with the World War, it eventually just goes on to get sort of tainted and things get strained. Like, not necessarily with them, but you'll just find that uh, there are a lot of times when Isherwood would just say, and I didn't talk to them again for six months. And you can totally understand why. Like, things just would have been pretty, pretty hectic. I really do think that this collection is worth reading, even if it doesn't have, you know, especially kind of flowery or beautiful language. I do think that Isherwood did a great job in uh, talking about the really, really subtle changes that were going on in the early 30s of Berlin. And uh, the good thing was that the different families that he lived with, usually he would encounter different people who uh, sh uh, like shared different ideas. And so there was one person who he just said was like uh, a political uh, chameleon and she would always like, you know, uh, a season ago or, or maybe a year or two ago, she'd voted for communists. But if you told her, but if you asked her, she would staunchly say that she voted for the Nazis because now the Nazis are becoming more prominent and so on. And you get these really kind of uh, clear images of people in all of these scenarios. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, LGBT themes in this book because I believe this book was written before uh, Isherwood published Christopher and His Kind, if I think that's the name of the book, where pretty much before that book, he wanted to... Uh, he kind of covered up a lot of the homosexuality and from that book onward he was much more open to writing about it which definitely helped out a lot for the gay liberation movement. Uh, there are some interactions so there's a group of hoodlums that are going into uh, are about to go into a club where there's a drag show going on and that and Isherwood and his friend are telling them about it and one of them is like oh what are you queer and Isherwood's like yeah I'm very queer but there's not any talk of uh, having relationships there are, there are some times when he like he's mostly just friends with women and he's obviously close with some other gay people like Peter and Otto but yeah, yeah, there's not a whole lot of LGBT themes, so it's not necessarily a book for that. I think this book is uh, worth reading. You'll probably, I mean, if you're like me, you'll just smash it out in a day. But yeah, I, you know, I can't really decide. It's funny. I can't really decide if I want to read any more Isherwood. Uh, if there's anything that you think stands out as being as great as a single man, and even a single man is not necessarily the style of book that I like to read, but I just thought it was a great execution of that style of work. Um, if you have anything that, if you have any recommend, recommendations for uh, Isherwood's work that's similar to that, I'm happy to, uh, uh, I'm happy to learn. But right now, I feel pretty, pretty sated with with Isherwood. I'm just like, yeah, okay, I think I've read his two most important works, and um, that'll that'll be basically it for for Isherwood. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video.